Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Um, for those watching at home, we've had a few technical difficulties. So, but welcome to you all. If you're at home, or when you're here, some of you have little candles. During the singing of Silent Night, if you're at home, find a candle and light it while we're singing uh, Silent Night. Let us begin with an introduction. Taken from Cloth for the Cradle, the Iona, the Iona Community Wild Goose Worship Pivot Group. This, tonight, is the meeting place of heaven and earth. For this, tonight, is the stable in which God keeps his appointment to meet his people. Not many high are here, not many holy, not many innocent children, not many worldly wise. Not all familiar places, not all frequent visitors. But if tonight only strangers met, that would be enough. For Bethlehem was not the hub of the universe, nor was the stable a platform for famous people. In an out-of-the-way place, which people never thought to visit, there God kept and keeps his promise. There God sends his Son. Join with me in the call to worship, taken from Isaiah 9, 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of darkness, on them light has shined. We are that people. For a child has been born for us. Christ is that. For God's own Son has been given to us. He is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. He will rule with justice and righteousness. His realm is one of peace. Let us join together and sing hymn 160. Verses 1, 2, and 5, I just about said 120 because that was the hymn number in the Presbyterian hymnal for years. Let us join together and sing number 60, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1, 2, and 5. Adore him, oh come let us adore 
Enter with your vulnerabilities and with your whole self, just as you are. Come with your brokenness. Come with your desire for new life. Come with your desire to love and to be lo beloved. Come at God's invitation this night. We come to welcome the Christ child tonight. Hope, peace, love, and joy are found in a manger and throughout the world. Let us join together and sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 64 in Voices United.
Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Let us join together in a Christmas prayer. Gracious God, with joy and thanksgiving, we gather as your people. We have come to hear once again the timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of today, quiet our hearts that we may know the peace and fullness of this holy time. Shine, O light, in the darkness of our world. Sing, O angels, in the stillness of our hearts. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill among men. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen.
Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, he came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king? or observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Jesus, Jesus, rest your head. You have got a manger bed. All the evil folks on earth sleep in feathers at their birth. Jesus, Jesus, rest your head. You have got a major bed. Have you heard about our Jesus? Have you heard about his fate? How his mother went to the stable on that Christmas Eve so late. Winds were blowing, cows were lowing, stars were glowing, blowing, blowing. Jesus, 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 rest your head. You have got a manger bed. All the evil folks on earth sleep in feathers at their birth. Jesus, rest your head. You have got a manger bed. Let us join in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we come this evening to worship and to remember. We come this evening to celebrate. Grant us ears to hear and hearts to understand your word read and spoken. Amen. One Christmas, a couple of years ago now, two different conversations converged over a couple of weeks. That made me wonder, where have all the shepherds gone? The first conversation started when my congregation borrowed a nativity scene that came with five wise men. They were all kings. We turned two around so they weren't, you know, their crowns, and we kind of made them so their crowns weren't all that obvious, and pretended they were shepherds. We're not too sure why there were no shepherds. The next year, I decided to get our own nativity set. So I started looking fairly early in September, and I started looking around in stores, and I started asking who had one. And So with the help of a few folks, I began to track down, because we wanted one that was fairly tall, you know, like we wanted one at least 10 inches, you know, because it was a good-sized sanctuary. I phoned around to gift stores, and they would describe them, and almost every time they described ornate, glitzy, glammed-up Mary and Joseph, the baby Jesus wrapped in silver 
or lame. The three kings, very ornate, no shepherds. The ones that boggled my mind was Mary in gold lame. Imagine a young girl, a poor, pregnant teenager, who gave birth to a, in a barn dressed in gold lame. It wouldn't work. I'm sorry, Mary and Joseph wearing gold, gold, gold lame. And when I grew up, we used to say, get real. I went to a friend, and she said she thought her aunt had an ordinary one. We borrowed that. And the next year, I found one on Amazon that was simple and plain, had two shepherds and three wise men, no gold lame. The second conversation was a story a friend told me. The children did a play in her church one year. The skit had a different, the different animals who lived in the stable talking about, Jesus, about the night Jesus was born. And they sang that song, you know, about you know, what did the animals talk about. It's in the hymn book. One of the characters was a little mouse. I guess according, after church, one lady came up to her and was most upset. She was greatly offended that there was a mouse at the birth of Jesus. I guess according to her, there were no mice or spiders or anything unpleasant at the birth of Jesus. Of course, growing up visiting and working on my uncle's and grandfather's farms, I kind of started to laugh. I knew exactly what a stable looked like and smelled like. So, where are the shepherds and what happened to the mice? Do we believe that when heaven came to earth, everything was made neat and tidy for God, that God somehow removed the mice and the spiders and the smell from the stable? We have sanitized this story. We've cleaned up the stable, removed anything we deem unpleasant, dressed Mary in gold lame, and we sent the shepherds packing. This image is about as real as, well, a Barbie. We find it impossible to believe that God would come into the world and be born in a stable. We find it hard to imagine that God would be born to humble people. We find it hard to believe that the angel that comes to Mary passes over the people of power, skips all the el elders of the town, and goes to a teenage girl who was engaged to a carpenter named Joseph. There was maybe no one in town with less status and power than Mary. The angel's visit is not just unexpected, it is a scandal. Mary is young and ordinary, living in a tiny place her life should have passed by in obscurity. Joseph, while of the house of David, was so far from the throne that to even consider him part of the royal family was laughable. Bethlehem was a small little town of no great importance at all. They only traveled there because the Emperor Augustus decreed that they had to go to their ancestral home to pay taxes. So along with hundreds of others, they went. Now every picture depicts Mary riding a donkey, but there is no reference to Mary right, to getting there any other way than walking. Now imagine walking a long distance while pregnant. When they got there, there was no room in the inn. The only, they ended up in the, the stable, out in the barn. There, amid the usual inhabitants of a stable, Mary gave birth. There was no fine linen bedding, no birthing room. Since she might have had, the, she might have had the innkeeper's wife present, but since they were strangers in a strange town, we're not even sure of that. We are told that we are told what all we are told is that there in that stable, far away from her family, this young woman gave birth all alone, except for Joseph. She didn't have fancy gold lamé dress tucked away for a photo op. Her reality that, might, that, her reality that night was a, was a barn in a small village where they knew no one. A smelly barn being lived in by animals of all kinds, spiders, mice, flies, 
birds, and maybe even fleas. And then we are told that there were shepherds in the fields not all that far away. Now, shepherds were not high on the social ladder. They tended to be poor farmers. They might own their sheep. They tended, but more than likely, they were men hired to look after the whole village's sheep. They stayed out there with the sheep. They tended to be a bit rough-looking and maybe just a bit smelly. We are told that while they were sitting out on the hillside near Bethlehem, something miraculous happened. An angel appeared to them. Now, this was not a regular occurrence for shepherds. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign you will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. Then the angel was joined by a chorus of angels who said, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth and good will to all men. The message that the Messiah was born came not to the powerful and the mighty. It came not to presidents or kings. We need to remember that the three wise men didn't appear for many months. The first people to meet God incarnate were not people of power, not people of influence or prestige, but shepherds. Lowly, ordinary, rather rough men. The message came through a group of men who had little standing in the community and were probably dirty and smelly. They didn't take time to rush home and clean up, so they went to the stable as they were. After all, when angels tell you to do something, it is probably wise to obey. They came because the angels told them to come. They came to see the Messiah. They came to see this wonder of wonders born this night, not in a palace, but a stable. Born as the song, I wonder as I wander, tells us to poor ornery people like you and like I. God who existed before time, God who turned nothing into the heavens and the earth, God who was present with us before we are born and walks through us through the valleys and the hills of our lives, God who loved the world so much that he came down from heaven to become one of us, God who came not as a mighty warrior but as a baby. God who came not in power, but in weakness. God who came down from heaven to be with us, to be one of us. God entered our world where there were mice and smelly stables and dirty shepherds. God entered into our reality, into our lives, in all its messiness, in all its turmoil. God entered our world where we are not perfect. God came to us not because we dress right, follow the rules perfectly, give enough money, attend church, but because God so loved the world. God came to us to help us carry the burdens that we each face. Yes, our lives are not perfect. Yes, we face illness and death. Yes, people disappoint us. Yes, we disappoint people in ourselves. Yes, our lives can be in disarray. And yes, it would be nice if God would just make all the messiness go away clean up the shepherds, and change them into CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, remove the mice, remove reality. But that's not the way of God. Our world in all its darkness is our world. But God incarnate in Jesus Christ entered our world and died a nasty real death but lives by the power of God's love. So where are, Mary, where are the Marys and Josephs? Where are the shepherds? Where, they, where are they on this night we call holy? They are sitting in sanctuaries, big and far, big and small around the world, if we could be sitting in sanctuaries. They are sitting at home, listening on television, on radio, or on computers. They are sitting at home, snuggled with ch small children, with visions of sugar plums dancing in their heads. They are cool hands in a hospital emergency room, soothing an injured patient, soothing a scared mother whose child is sick. They are the people grieving a loved one. They are living in the, on the street and in million-dollar homes. 
They are the ones who find Christmas hard because they think they should be happy. After all, that's what we're told. Where are the Marys and the Josephs and the shepherds? They are in the real world with mice and, sma- and spiders and sadness and joy. They are the countless ordinary people whose lives God sustains and who God loves. They are sitting here in this place. They're sitting in their living rooms on this night we call holy. As we remember that night so long ago when love came down from heaven. Amen. Let us 
continue to worship God by the giving of our offering. Our dedication will be verse 4 of hymn 55. It was cold, and Mary and Joseph were fearful. They were poor and had no place fitting for their child. They were uncertain about what God wanted from them, but that, that, that did not stop the birth. Today we are still sometimes cold and fearful, certainly poor in many ways. We often feel we have no place and we are unclear about what God wants of us. But these things did not stop the birth of Jesus then, nor will they now. Lord Jesus, be born in us today. Like Mary and Joseph who trusted in your grace, may we trust all that we have and are to you. Bless, bless the gifts we bring. Hallow our thoughts and our actions that Christ may be glorified through them, that we may bring light to a world that is yet in darkness. Amen. If you have a candle, and some of you have candles here tonight, we invite you to, in the singing of, while we sing Silent Night, to light your candle. So you at home, you can light your candles. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him not anything that thing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. The light of the world has come to give us light for our lives. Let us join together and sing Silent Night.
dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at my birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Lord, in the beginning, when all was very dark, you said, let there be light, and there was light. Life throughout the universe. And when the human race was exhausted and tired and weary in the darkness of anxiety, confusion, and sin, into that darkness you came as light in Jesus Christ. God became human being, a human being among us. Once again, it is dark, not just dark at midnight, but dark in ourselves, dark as doubt, dark with fear and uncertainty, dark with confusing and conflicting voices in our ears. Come, light of life. Lighten the darkness of our lives with your mighty word of love. Lighten our hearts with joy, with the joy of your promised coming. Lighten our world with the hope that faith in you still brings. We go out into Christmas Day in the peace of Jesus Christ. May his peace that lightens the soul with faith lifts the spirits with hope, leavens the world with joy, be yours tonight and always. And the blessing of God, the Creator, the Son, and the Spirit go with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>